My name is Steve Syrek. I'm 33 years old and I'm from New Jersey but I live in New York City. I am a graduate student in the Literatures and English program at Rutgers University. I'm studying for my PhD. I, I don't really want to go on marches and, and go to rallies and to hold signs. I, I used to do that as well. I don't do that so much anymore. I think it's great and I think young people should be doing that or anyone who wants to do it. I, I don't really want to do it anymore. I want to do something a little bit more concrete. And uh, I gravitated naturally to the library. I think that the dissemination of knowledge and putting books into people's hands is an unambiguous good. No matter what your politics, no matter what you think of what's going on here, there are people who live here, who sleep here every day, and they don't have, um, they don't necessarily have the means to procure information for themselves. So we are almost as important as the kitchen. The kitchen feeds them food. We feed them books. The editor-in-chief of The Nation came to visit us and she said, I think she summed it up very well, she said books give her a warm feeling, which is how I feel. I mean, how can you hate books? People come here, they don't quite know what to expect. They see books and then suddenly it's okay. They can relax because books have that kind of calming effect. Librarians have offered us support with donations, with their time. We have a lot of actual librarians, including um, employees of the New York Public Library, librarians from other library, libraries, university libraries, um, coming here to volunteer. Um, librarians from around the country have, have tweeted, they've contacted us on Facebook, they've emailed, they posted on our blog, and they're offering us support, either their, their, their physical presence or material support. I've even got one guy who wants to help us procure any materials we want from the interlibrary loan system, which means we are a legitimate, fully functioning research library. Someone could come here and request an article of any kind, and we could theoretically get it for free and give it to them. I've had many authors come with copies of their own books, which they sign and dedicate to Occupy Wall Street. People mail us books from all over the country. It is entirely an emergent property of what's going on here, because we ourselves are not building it out of anything other than what we get from the outside. We may not have a cohesive, coherent, well-articulated rationale, but I don't think the status quo does either. That said, libraries are there to provide you the means in order to articulate your rationale. We think through books. We think through the ideas of others. We don't exist in isolation. We need to communicate and correspond and, and experience the intersubjective exchange of information and ideas in order to know where we stand. You know? We, you and I share ideas, and I see where you stand, and I think about where I stand, and you know, you should be able to sort of nudge me, maybe, in some, in some direction. I might be stubborn, I might not, but all of these interactions have an effect on what we think. Books are the synthesis of humanity's collective wisdom, and we have to pick and choose very carefully what it is we want to subscribe to. I really don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Every day I think, should I be at home just working on my dissertation instead of being down here? It's really difficult to come here. Um, you know, fighting against Wall Street or fighting, whatever we're fighting against or whatever we're fighting for, the odds always seem insurmountable. And it seems like it's easier not to do it, to just worry about yourself, your own life, your own career, your own thing. And, you know, tomorrow I might decide I need to go back to my own thing. Right now I'm, I'm emboldened by the support we've been getting and by the enthusiasm everybody here has for making this work. I think in a, in a movement like this, all you can have is hope. And it's difficult to maintain hope. And I think you know, hope is, um, is different from optimism. I'm not the first one who has said that. Optimism is, optimism is like you think things will turn out for the best, but you don't do anything about it. Um, and Martin Luther King, for example, said that the, the, the arc of history bends toward justice. But I think we have to bend it. You know, if we put our hands on history, then yes, it will bend toward justice. It doesn't just happen alone. Um, we can't put faith in something outside ourselves to make it happen. Um, certainly, the process of politics demands that we participate and make things happen. And if we don't, then I think we only have ourselves to blame. So where things will go will, will depend on what people want out of it, what the people here want out of it, and what society at large, assuming they continue to support us, wants out of it.